prophet, a visionary. He's God chosen for, for this generation. He is our man of valor, our pastor, Vincent Alexander. I want to give honor to God who's the head of my life, and I thank you guys for being here. I thank God for my pastor. I thank God for being saved, sanctified, and filled with the precious and mighty gift of the Holy Ghost. I just want to say thank you, Pastor, for allowing me to be a member of your church, the church that God has blessed you to start, because it's one thing to be a leader, but it's another thing to have a follower, have followers. If you're a leader and you don't have followers, you're just a man taking a walk. And I thank God that you're a leader because you have followers. Just look around the room. So as we talk about pastor and uh, appreciation, we're talking about a man of valor. And I'm going to jump in Genesis 1, 26, or Genesis 1 and 1, Genesis 1, 21, and Genesis 1, 27. And when you look at Genesis 1 and 1, you see this word called created. In the beginning, God is created. In Genesis 1, 26 or, 20, or 1 and 1, you see the same word created. In Genesis 1, 27, you see God created. In the beginning, God created the heavens. And then he also, in the beginning, he also created the firmaments. But in verse 27, he created man. And so when I look at that word created, I look at the word, I hear the Hebrew word say bara. And so now I understand when God said create, he did something awesome. When he created Pastor Alexander, he created something marvelous and wonderful in his own eyes. And so when I look at this thing and I understand that God, he had to use a formula. God's formula is better than man's formula because science came out of God's formula. But sometimes when you follow man's formula, which is science, you get lost. And so when I go to Genesis, I'm just going to read Genesis 1 and 1 and see the formula for science. Because the formula for science is that you need time, force, motion, space, and matter. When you have all five of these things, you have science. So how in the world is science or God's creation of science for man to do what he do? He can't do it without God. But I'm going to show you how God did it in just Genesis 1 and 1, the formula for science. He says, in the beginning, that's time. God, that's force. Created, that's the motion. Heaven is the space, and earth is the matter. So now you have the formula for science. But I want you to also understand that the Bible says that the just shall live by faith. Because science is nothing without God. Can we take a journey just for a moment? Science and faith had a little walk. We did this last week. And faith wanted, science wanted to take faith on a walk in the woods. And science says, listen... I'm going to take you into the forest. I can name every tree that's in the forest. And he says, this is a cherry tree. This is an apple tree. This is an orange tree. Faith said, okay, that's cool. Science says, walk with me just a little bit further. I want you to see the flowers in the field. I can name every flower that's in the field, the rose and the tulips. Faith said, that's cool. Science says, let's go just a little further. He says, I can tell you how old this mountain is or this rock is in the, in the middle of the road. Faith said, that's cool. Science wanted to go a little bit further, but he couldn't go a little bit further because there was a stream. And Faith said, man, let's go across that stream. Science says, man, I can't get across that stream because there's no way across the stream. So faith says to science, let's go back to where you started. Because when you went to the flowers, you named a couple flowers, but you forgot the most important flowers, the Rose of Sharon, the Lily of the Valley, 
mm, mm, mm. and faith says, now just come with me just a little bit further, science, because see, you walking by sight, and I'm not. Let's go name, you name the trees, you name the apple tree, you name the orange tree, you name the peach tree. But you forgot the most important tree of it all, the tree of life. <laughs> Faith says, come on, man, we got to go to this rock that you said that you can name and tell me how old it is. But see, science, I want you to understand I'm going to take you to a rock of ages. Upon this rock, I build my church, the foundation. And faith says, science, I see that you stopped at the river. So faith said to science, let's cross the river. Science says it's impossible. But faith said, I need you to talk to this man by the name of Peter who got out the ship and he walked on water. He says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Faith kept walking across the water while science stayed behind. Faith says, listen, anything that I ask in the Father's name, it shall be given. See, the just shall live by faith and my pastor live by faith. Can we just go back to the gym just for a moment? We were in that gym, praising and worshiping God. But let's go back a little bit further. Left another congregation to start a new fellowship by faith. And this was just in a matter of six months. Went from there to the gym, from the gym to here. Let me do it again. Went from there to the gym, to the gym, to here. I want you to understand that the pastor and the leader that we have is a God-sent man. Because when you look at people who have been in ministry for such a long time, they have not went from there to there to here. They're still there. <laughs> but when you got a man that's after God's own heart, he will give him his heart's desire. But I want to talk to you a little bit about how awesome God is. I need you guys to really pay attention because God is so awesome that there are some things that he has never seen. Preacher, you said he ain't never seen. I, I, he has never seen a situation that he can't fix. God has never seen a man that he cannot save. God has never seen a substitute for his son. God has never seen a man save himself. But then David comes into play and David says, Preacher, can I say something? I say, yes, sir, David, what can you say? David said, I was young, but now I'm old. But I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Oh, my God. Is, it, is God awesome? God is awesome, and we have a leader that follows God, right? And so when we talk about a man of valor, but let's talk about this because the proverbial writer in the book of Proverbs say, who can find a faithful man, a trustworthy man? Who can find, who can find a faithful man? But then he goes into the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah 17 and 9, he says, the heart is deceitful above all things, they, that she enter, no, that all things, desperately wicked, who can know it? So when I go here, who can find? I want you to understand, if I'm looking for a man to be faithful, you got to understand that my heart is wicked and deceitfully. So I'm working with dysfunctional members. I can't see straight. So if I'm looking for a man or a woman with broken mechanisms, I can never find a faithful or righteous man. Because I have to understand that I was created after the academic nature before Christ came in. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But I also have to understand that I was created after the epidemic nature walking by my five sensual perceptions. And we know what those are, hearing, sight, 
so forth and so forth. So when I'm looking for something spiritual and I'm not in God, I cannot find it. Because I'm broken, a broken neck mechanism looking for something righteous, it won't happen. It's like a blind man in a dark room looking for a black cat that's not there. I can't do it because I'm looking out of a broken mechanism. So women, when you're looking for a husband and you're not looking through the lens of God or the word of God, you're going to pick something wrong every time. See, we need to understand that we walk by faith and not by sight. And we must understand that we can't lean to our own understanding for Satan has been using the same three things from the beginning of time, the lust of the eye the lust of the world, and the pride of life. So now when God says, who can find a faithful man or who can find a virtuous woman, I have to understand that this is not gender-based because he said a virtuous woman and a faithful man and a virtuous woman is not a woman of virtue, but it's a woman of valor. So when I understand that it's valid, that it's not gender-based, guess what? I can have my wife walk next to me. And when I leave and go somewhere else, she still stays on her course because God does not see gender. The Bible, God looks at the heart, but man looks on the outer appearance. So the spirit that she has is the same spirit that I have. That's why we are equal. See, that's why she came out of the side of Adam because she has God's spirit, I have God's spirit, and we're equal because God does not see gender. He sees that spirit or that soul. So now I understand who can find a virtuous woman, who can find a faithful man for her price is far above or his price is far above rubies. It's so far in between to find the two because if it was so much of a faithful man out there or a virtuous woman, so many of them out there, then they wouldn't have that value. But it's so far in between to find a faithful man and a virtuous woman that her price, so that lets me know, Drexel, that if I'm looking for a faithful man or a virtuous woman, I can't buy her. I can't impress her. I can't buy him. I can't impress him because he understands that his price is far above rubies. So I don't care if you got a Mercedes. I don't care if you win Louis Vuitton. I don't care if you win Versace. Because what you got doesn't impress them and it can't impress God. But the only way to get to a virtuous woman or to a faithful man that's hid in God is only by way of God. Huh. So if you're looking for a wife, if you're looking for a husband, mm, you got to come God's way. Because that wife or that husband is hid behind God. And the best way to impress God is through praise and worship and give him your life. Who can find a faithful man? Who can find a virtuous woman? So, but then we go into the book of Judges, the sixth chapter, and we talk about this man by the name of Gideon. Ooh, man, man, man. See, when I stay away from my notes, I can flow. The notes, you know, notes are good. <clears throat> but for me, can I move by the Holy Ghost? Because when I move by the notes, I stutter, I fall, and I trip. But when I lean unto God. And so when we talk about Gideon, see what was going on with Gideon. Slow down, Wayman. What was going on in Gideon, with Gideon was that the children of Israel were in a state of apostasy. And they started doing the things of the surrounding nations. And sometimes, Mother Hannah touched on it today, that God will use your enemy to put you back in position. So he used the army to come up against the Israelites, excuse me, to get them back in position to give their lives back to God. But the thing about it for me was now, when you got the tribe of Manasseh, which is where Gideon was from, but then you got these other tribes, the sons of Abraham coming up against the sons of Israel, they all family. They all some kin. But God used them to put them back in line. But the Bible says, y'all want to read it, go to Judges the sixth chapter. And 
But the Bible says now that the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. Even in their mess, they cried unto the Lord, and guess what their daddy did? Their daddy came to see about them and called Gideon, a man of valor. But when he called them back into the foe, he was calling them to repentance. He wasn't just going to save them from the battle, but he wanted to save them from themselves. And so when I look at this and I think about now how, because what God is going to do, God is going to talk over Gideon's life before Gideon even understood who he was. He called Gideon a man of valor before Gideon even got into the battle. And then as we go down a little bit further, Gideon called himself the least of the least. Now this after God don't told him he was a man of valor and God told him that he was going to use him. Gideon still had doubt. I'm like, wait a minute. God, you spoke over my life. You don't told me this, that, and the third going to happen in my life. But you still want to bless me. You still want to use me even when I don't believe like I should. God has spoken over a lot of our lives and told us a lot of things. But instead of believing God, we believe what we feel and what we see. For the just shall walk by faith and not by sight. I'm going by what I feel, Lord. I'm not going by what I read. I'm not going by what you're saying. I'm going by my emotions. And so I have to be cognizant of that because when you talk about who knows the heart, you have to understand the heart definition from the lexicon's perspective. It's my thoughts, my affection, and my intentions. So when I look at you, what do I see? I can't look at a 36, 24, and 36 and be moved by that because I'm walking by sight and not walking by who you are in God. See, when you're looking for a husband or whatever situation you may be in, you're looking for some muscles, you're looking for whatever you might be looking for, you can't look at the physique, you can't listen to the voice. Some women like high-pitched voice, some women like deep voices, and some men like whatever, whatever. But whatever the case may be, don't be fooled by the exterior. You need to see who they are in God. Sometimes you got to turn off the lights and close your eyes and listen to what God is saying in the spirit and not going by what you see. You, boy, you so handsome. I like the car you drive. I like the way you smell. I like the way you look. See, I'm going by what I see, but on the inside, he's just as corrupt as an apple with a worm on the inside. But I'm looking at what I see. Who can find a faithful man? Who can find a virtuous woman? I'm telling you, we're talking about our pastor now, and, and, but I want to, oh God, he's, now, when he's talking to Gideon, and Gideon, I'm going to go to verse 15 for those six chapter of Judges, verse 15, and I'm going to break this down where Gideon felt like he was the least of least, and he told God, after God called him a man of valor, verse 15 says, and he said unto him, oh my Lord. Where shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh. I am the least in my father's house. Now that sounds like a bad thing. But Gideon understood that he was nothing compared to God. Gideon understood that, God, I'm not worthy to even be called by you. Gideon understood that God was bigger than him for the most high God to even choose him. Gideon saw that he was nothing in comparison to God. This is why Gideon says, I'm the least. Because Gideon said, I need to... <laughs> Gideon says, let me die so that Christ may live. Gideon understood his worth in the eyesight of God. God, I'm, I'm grateful that you called me. I'm happy that you called me to be a pastor, but God, who am I to lead these people? Like Moses said to God, I, I can't do it because God, whom shall I say that sent me? Yeah, I don't know the struggles of what pastors go through and ministers and those that have been called. Lord, hold on, man. I just want to be like everybody else. Why can't I just sit down? But I have chosen you before the foundation for such a time as this. 
And so now when I understand Gideon, when he understands his worth and his value, he understands that I can't do nothing, God, outside of you. I don't take this job lightly because these people's lives are in my hand. And so when I look at that, I want to break this. It's another scripture, though. There's so many scriptures running through my head, man. It's like, can I slow it down? Gideon, I'm, about, I'm almost done because I want to keep it short. I don't want to keep you long. Gideon understood, my pastor understands that I must present. We always talk this scripture. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service. Now, what does that mean? Now, if you want to present your body a living sacrifice, I must present my eyes as a living sacrifice for Psalms 121 and 1 says, I will look up to the hills from whence cometh my help. Now, that's just my eyes. What about my ears, preacher? You said my body. Well, let's go to Matthew 11:15. He that hath ears, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. But, ah, that's my mind, that's my ears. And Well, let's talk about my mind. Uh, Philippians 2 and 5 said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So we did my eyes, my ears, my mind. But what about my heart? Well, let's go to Romans 12 and 1, or Romans 10 and 12. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So we went with my eyes, the ears, the mouth, the heart. Oh, what about my hands? You said my body. What about my hands? Ecclesiastic 9 and 10 says, Who, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it to thy might. Now that's my eyes, my ears, my mouth, my heart, my hands. You left off something. What about my knees? Oh, I'm trying to tell you, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, which is a reasonable service. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Well, my knees, Philippians 2 and 10. That at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow. So Gideon understands. So now when I read Romans 12 and 1, I understand that I must present my entire body not just have lip service. My eyes must look at those things that God would only want me to look at. My ears will be the receptors that only God wants me to hear through. My mouth will only speak those things that God wants me to speak. For the Bible also says, let not filthy communication proceed out of your mouth. I am mm. just want to present my body a living sacrifice. So the Bible says, now if I want my hands, the Bible says, touch not a woman. How can a man put fire to his bosom without him being burned? So if I want to present my body a living sacrifice, I ain't got no business touching her nowhere and her touching me somewhere because I understand that I must present my body a living sacrifice. Now, I must also understand that when I present my body a living sacrifice, that my feet mm, will not lead me somewhere that they should not go, but I will have my feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. Woo. But then again, my mind. I will acknowledge him always in all my ways, and he shall, he will direct my, my body. This is my body. My body. Mm. Ah, thank you, God. So now we understand what type of pastor we have because he disciplines himself. It's not, it's not, pastor, can we just talk? It's not easy being in leadership, being a male or a female, when you got females trying to come at you, or you got males coming at you, and you are a leader, and they see your leadership position, which the devil tries to use them for you to give up your anointing. See, the devil don't care who he used, but he gonna try to use somebody but thank God that we have a pastor and a first lady who is hid behind the cross, hid behind Jesus Christ. That's why we need to pray for them because everybody in church, uh, they got some in here now. That's after other things. So we got to keep him covered, keep her covered, keep you covered, keep me covered. Can we all just cover each other? Can we all just cover 
each other. So when he says a man of valor and who can find a faithful man, who can find a virtuous woman, my pastor, my first lady. But then he goes to Jeremiah 17 and 10 and says, above all the hardest, deceitfully and wicked. So I'm looking through a crooked lens, looking for something that's straight. And I can't do it. I can only do it through Jesus Christ. So we understand that. And I just want to tell my pastor, I told y'all I was going to keep this real short. I think I did good. Because <laughs> I usually go, 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 gadget, go. But I want to tell my pastor, and I want to tell everyone here, <laughs> yesterday my pastor and I and another gentleman went out for breakfast. And we had such a glorious time of men's fellowship just talking. And I have never had a male friend before in my life, never. Because I had trust issues. I didn't trust people. I didn't want no one in my life. I keep people at a distance. But then a year ago, my children, or maybe two years ago, my wife now, and I was looking for them a church home because it was very important for me for my children to be fed spiritually and to be encouraged. And I saw a post when you guys were on Columbia Avenue and they were having a youth fellowship and I've been seeing them around in the workers meeting, in the district meeting. And I told my wife, I found a place where I want you guys to go. I couldn't go because I was still obligated to the ministry that I was up under until God released me. And I told them they can go over there so often but then come with me so often. And then him and I had a discussion. And we sat down and we talked at the same restaurant we went to yesterday. And I questioned him and I found out what his mission statement was for the church and et cetera, et cetera. And he kept saying, preacher, when you coming? And I said, hey man, uh, I gotta wait, I gotta wait. <laughs> but he knew I was coming. And we had such a beautiful fellowship and they've been here. And then when God released me, from the other ministry that I was up under. I said, Lord, where am I gonna go? But I knew he was calling me to be up under this ministry. Mind you, I'm 58. Mind you, he's way younger than me. So me and God having a struggle. I said, Lord, check this out. This is how I talk to him. Can I talk to him the way I talk to him? I don't know how you talk to him. She like, wait. I said, man, check this out, man. I ain't, I ain't going over there. This cat younger than me, man. I said, I'm old enough to be his daddy. I said, I ain't going over there. I mean, I told him this. I'm not saying nothing that he don't know. And I said, furthermore, his, his wife is too young. I said, man, I ain't going over there. Then God took me to the scriptures. He said, what did Paul tell Timothy? Let no man despise thy youth. And he says, are you following him or are you following me? I said, God, I'm following you. I've been over here ever since and I've been so happy. I don't look at his age. I don't care about his age. All I see is Jesus in him, and that's all I care about. And I thank God for him. And, um, I, and so when him and I get together, I said I never had a friend, but I want you to understand the pecking order. He will all, I will always see him as my pastor. I don't care how close him and I get, he's still my leader. I see, sometimes people get so comfortable that you become friends with your pastor, you forget that he's your pastor. See, his first position is my pastor, and his second position is my friend. And he'd be talking about, man, call me Vinny. I ain't calling you. Nah, 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 nah. I like pastor. Because see, if I start calling you Vinny, I get too comfortable, and then I get in trouble. I ain't trying to get in trouble. But I thank God for him because he's been here. I not only got fat naturally, so we ate, man, we ate, man, yeah. They see how much food I eat. They say, man, how you do it? <laughs> I said, I'm not only getting fat naturally, but I'm gaining weight spiritually. See, when you've been in the desert for 20 years, and when you come to a place where you can just sit and eat, I'm going to eat as much as I can because I'm being fed here. And I love the fellowship here, and I love everybody here. And I just want to say, Pastor, that I love you. I appreciate you. And since I've been here on fertile ground, I must testify about being on fertile ground because the ground I was on wasn't too bad before, but it wasn't like this, where checks coming in the mail. Now, I'm not bragging about any of those things. I'm just showing you how when you're in the right place, God going to bless you. 
and you can sit out there and you can have two cars, which I talked to him about, which I didn't have a car before. And when you had, I had no credit. I ain't, had no, I ain't got no work history, y'all. I ain't got no, I ain't worked nowhere. I've been in the streets my whole life. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just testifying about being up under this pastor. You're fine. And since I've been here, I got credit. Since I've been here. So when he talks about checks in the mail and this, that, and the third, catch on by faith. I got a brand new car out there. I mean, I ain't had no job. I ain't got no history. But anyway, I said that to say all this, not to brag about me, but to brag about my pastor. Get behind him. Support what he's doing. You support him in showing God and being faithful to God first, faithful to him second. You can't help but be blessed. Now, I know my pastor going to have remarks, so I'm going to turn this over to him and let him just bask in the joy of what God is doing. Amen. Come on, clap your hands for Minister Daniels. Amen. Truly, we thank God for each of you, my father's children. Amen to our beautiful elect lady in her absence. Amen. She's home taking care of the baby resting. I'm sorry, I'm old school. She ain't coming for six weeks. I told her, no, you staying home for six weeks. Amen. Uh, but we thank God for her. Amen. Truly, I thank God for each of you and all of your wonderful words that you expressed, um, the text messages, the love that was shown. Uh, people don't have to be nice. Amen. But I truly want you all to know that my heart was made glad. Amen. And I truly appreciate all that you have done, all that you will continue to do. Um, but one thing did stand out uh, when Sister Ariana was reading that poem she began to talk about when I go up, I want everybody to go up with me. And that is my heart's desire that God continue to elevate us all, for all of us to grow, for all of us to excel. Uh, there's no little I, big I, amen, but we all are in this together. I just have the uh, call to be your pastor, amen, but we're in this together. Look at somebody say, we're in this together. Amen. Truly, I appreciate all of you. Uh, to Minister Daniels and that awesome word. Amen. I told him he, come on, give it up for him. Amen. I told him he going to be tired. Amen. I guess I ain't going to be able to preach him for a while. He done had two Sundays back to back. Amen. So I got to doctor myself up. Amen. And get back. Amen. But truly, we thank God for him. And I just thank God for all of you. Amen. You all are just so sweet. Amen. And I love you all. Amen. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Is that anybody's testimony on today? Amen. God has brought us too far to leave us now. Amen. And uh, I want to encourage you all, amen. The enemy is fighting so much, amen. And, and I know that the enemy will fight starting at the head. But so many people are out sick today. And so many people are dealing with different things in their families. And the enemy is fighting us tooth and nail, amen. But I'm here to tell you, he did not bring you this far to leave you. Stand to your feet as we get ready to leave. You may have a prayer request may say, Pastor, I need you to agree with me in prayer on today. Amen. I want you just to put that at the forefront of your mind, and we're going to corporately agree with you on today, knowing that God is going to turn it around. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, touch each and every person under the sound of my voice, God. We thank you for this beautiful celebration. And God, we ask, Lord, that you bless each and every person on today, Lord, for their kind acts, God, their love their generosity that's shown towards their leader father we ask lord that you bless them in the mighty name of jesus god we ask lord whatever their prayer request is lord that you meet their prayer request meet that need turn that situation around and we thank you for it now and god we ask lord that you bless even the refreshments that were prepared god bless the hands that have prepared it in the name of jesus let it be a nurse unto our body